Hi, my name is Oliver from Coconetics. Uh, today I want to give a tutorial and introduction how to use PT Rich Text Editor in your own projects. Uh, you might have heard about my PT Core Text. It's already followed by over a thousand people on GitHub. And this serves as the basis for PT Rich Text Editor. It basically provides two, two halves. The first being converting HTML into NS attributed strings. The second one displaying these and providing some uh, interactivity and UI for it. Because the built in methods to draw attributed strings in iOS uh, have not been so great. And for example, for embedding images and so on, I needed to write that myself. Now, DTCorp Text is an open source project which you can license for use uh, in your apps uh, either by attributing it to me or by uh, paying a certain fee. It's called a non attribution license. And uh, that gives you display of attributed strings and rich text. If you want to edit it and have the magnifying glass, then you need the DT Rich Text Editor, which is a uh, for pay component that is available on my uh, part store, uh, which you can find on coconetics.com part store. And then you move a little bit down, uh, Rich Text Editor. Uh, if you click here, you can order it. It's uh, 500 euros at the moment, uh, plus tax if you don't have a business or a, a, a tax exempt um, by uh, providing the EU VAT identification number. If you fill this out with your correct address, uh, I will email you a PDF invoice. And once you pay that via PDF or uh, via uh, PayPal or via bank transfer, then you get an access email to the source code repository where the latest version of DT Rich Text Editor is located. Now, um, I'm now on my desktop and for the sake of um, this, this demonstration, uh, I'd like to make a mkdir uh, rich demo folder and there I will check out svn, check out https svn coconetics.com uh, dt rich text editor minus minus uh, username you get a user um, name that's uh, read only and uh, from there it asks me for the password or in, in the case because I checked it out before it doesn't so you see it downloads the trunk of rich text editor um, into uh, this folder and actually was a bit stupid of me so let let me cancel that uh, because I don't I don't want to get uh, the the trunk plus the tags um, but I just want the current trunk so um, let's rm minus rf the dt which text editor okay that's now empty again uh, so do this again but specify uh, the trunk subfolder um, here usually when you do it the first time it asks you for the password but in my case because I entered it before it remembered that so uh, it now downloads uh, the, the core project, um, which in, uh, includes a demo app plus uh, a static library and several uh, externals to this. So uh, let me actually show you how the project looks like. The, uh, where am I? See, I need to go to trunk and here is a DT Rich Text Editor Xcode project. Uh, it's uh, set up such you have core. Core is uh, basically the code necessary for the editing, uh, which is all in, in source. You've got some external uh, projects which are included as sub projects. So they in turn, uh, you can look at these and they, are, they follow the same structure. There's always a core 
a demo. Uh, in the demo, you might have resources and source code. Uh, so each of these you can uh, look at individually and even use them individually if you like. Now, the first thing that Xcode does, which we don't like, is it creates uh, schemes for all the targets it finds. And not just the targets of the current project, but also the sub-project project targets. So what we're going to do, manage schemes and throw it all away. Because we can always create them ourselves. The first one that I actually want to show you is uh, DT Core Text has a demo app. So we call this, say, demo app. DT Core Text. Uh, and let's have a look at that, say, on the iPad simulator. Just run that. Uh, I'm showing this to you for a simple reason because uh, it uh, can help you understand what's going on with the uh, formatting and uh, display of things. Like, for example, uh, any of these files uh, you can, let's actually increase it to original size. Um, you, you put in some HTML, in this case it's the, the current test.html uh, resource from the demo, and then you can turn on the debug frames and it shows you uh, the red is the uh, attributed text uh, content part or I call it DT uh, attributed text layout frame if I'm not mistaken um, and alternating green and red you see the glyph runs uh, which are numbers of characters that have the same attributes which attributes you can see under ranges so you see the first six characters uh, they are of this font and have this paragraph style and there's one with a different um, some, somehow style and then there's a third one um, and all of this might have for example the same font but there's uh, a small change that somehow makes it different so this breaks it uh, into three errors. So what you can do is uh, you, you can put in HTML where uh, it somehow looks different than you expected and have a look with the, the view, the debug frames, the ranges, uh, what it turns out as. Now there's also the character views which actually shows you the individual characters. Um, like here for example the, the A is a uh, paragraph break, then here's an, an empty paragraph and there's another um, paragraph here. And you put in HTML, you get out an NS attributed string that's being rendered by DT Core Text, and you probably want to get out HTML in the end as well. And there's a very, very simple, basic um, HTML generator built into uh, DT Core Text, which goes through the attributes, uh, like these ranges here, and turns them back into HTML. And in order to preserve all the formatting and so on, it needs to attach uh, the, the font attributes wherever they change. And in this case, uh, for each paragraph, it does a style tag. So it, it wouldn't win any beauty contest, but hey, the text looks like it should. should. All right, that's, that's it for this demo. And I encourage you to actually play around with this because if there's any formatting problems, then you would want to turn to the open source project and maybe help out there to, to get it fixed. Um, that much for this. Uh, the second demo that I'd like to show you is actually the demo that comes from the editor. So demo app editor. Uh, same scenario. We just run this scheme as it is. Uh, and actually, what the wrong with name? Could not load nip in bundle. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's because I removed a file a little bit earlier um, in the demo app delegate 
and we don't have a nip file anymore. Ah. Sorry, <laughs> that, that was bad that I removed it. I need to quickly fix it. Uh, so in the demo view controller M, uh, I need to implement a load view. And if I remember correctly, I had a UI view uh, CG rect frame equals UI application share application application. No, was it UI? UI screen, main screen, application frame, and we create a view that has a uh, UI view and it with frame frame, which is the one that we actually assign. And we want, a, uh, there's a That's the wrong one. I'm messing around in the wrong <laughs> project, which is also a bit embarrassing. There's the uh, under demo source view controller. This is the one that we want to set up our thing. Because um, you see, it's just a black window, but what I need to do here in this, this view controller for the demo is I want this ET rich text editor view right in there. So uh, I need to instantiate the rich editor, rich editor equals this alloc in it with frame view bounds. I probably want to give it your view auto resizing flexible width and your view auto resizing flexible height and we want to add that to our main view and we also want um, do we have it that's the scroll view delegate we have a text delegate that I want to implement for here yeah equals self and if I'm not mistaken that should be it Let's see about that self view what's going on here ah okay uh, view at sub view <laughs> stupid rich editor I cannot add a view a sub view of itself <laughs> And there you are. Okay. I'm going to commit these, these changes. That was just uh, so that uh, that works without a zip. Yeah. I removed them from the demo. Now, okay, about this demo. Uh, I've, I've mounted a toolbar here on top of the keyboard. This is the input view. Um, and uh, it's a bit too large if you run it it also works, of course, on iPhone, but I didn't optimize it or, or kind of stack, stack this somehow so you see the overlap. So that, not, not a nice experience. I'd rather have you look at that uh, on the iPad simulator. Uh, that makes a bit more sense. And so you see it already starts out with a bit of uh, text put in here that comes from the... Um, a rich text editor view controller M, which is the view controller for the demo, and you can see it's uh, using some basic HTML uh, to format this text. So we have some red text, and there's a bold, an italic, and the green text with font family Caria. So you see we're mixing fonts and everything. And what you get is all the things that you expect from an editor. Yeah, you can push and hold, you get the magnifying glass and you can uh, swipe over, over the text and have a look at it. Um, you can 
Hi, this is me live typing some text and let's say you want to uh, select the word and maybe th maybe three and make make it underlined you can you can uh, select the second word and make it say bold and let's say this this we want to highlight I've implemented a basic highlighting method which is basically just the, the background we can have different colors for this uh, this is all just serving to uh, demonstrate the editor. Uh, you can uh, have multiple paragraph alignments, like in this case uh, natural is the default, but you can also make it centered or right aligned. You can have one centered and one right aligned, just as you like, or even justified. Um, though justified only works if you have a longer text. So this requires longer text than uh, you see like 60% of a line than a certain line so that it justifies. Hmm? Uh, another thing that's neat is you can uh, add images. Uh, like there's a graphic of a smiley. Isn't it nice? And if I had some image in the simulator, but I don't at the moment, I could even uh, uh, put this in here. And you see the image behaves just like a, a character. So you can remove it and it's gone. And this is the, the editor demo. Um, there's one other uh, feature that I want to, to show that is um, if you hide the keyboard, and now long press over the text, you see you can still select text. So you can even use this without being able, able to edit, but for example, to, to allow uh, selecting some text and uh, so for example, have uh, your own uh, context menu to uh, deal with, with the text, even though I'm not editing it, um, uh, uh, I can still select it. All right. Okay, let's have a, a bit of a tour around uh, what makes up this demo um, or this, this project. There's the static library, which is containing all the, the code that you need to add to your project. Um, a variant of that is a static framework, which uh, should in theory uh, contain uh, the ARM6, ARM7 and the simulator code. Uh, as a FAT universal uh, static framework, though I found uh, that the idea in general is nice, but hardly nobody is actually using these. It's more like a, a geekery trick. The modern way how to uh, implement components and get them into your project projects is via sub sub uh, sub projects, which is actually what you see here if you go into core externals. Uh, the DT Rich Text Editor core relies on these three uh, sub projects uh, to pull in resources and uh, code to then actually wrap up one final bundle. Uh, and if you look at the demo app, this actually relies on two things it needs the uh, resources for the resource bundle for the DT loop, which is the magnifying class. You have special graphics you need for that and one static library that contains all the code and that looks so simple but in reality if you look at the static library this uh, then um, uh, links in several things uh, and actually I'm seeing here it's missing one, uh, two dependencies yeah so let me just quickly add them that should actually be uh, depending on DT loop resource bundle because if that doesn't exist it needs to build it uh, or actually no that's not the case because uh, this oh no there is some code in DT loop so it's not the resource bundle but it's the uh, static library that needs to be in here uh, and web archive we got but DT core text is still missing the text static library. 
Uh, these dependencies basically mean uh, if one of these uh, sub-projects was changed, uh, then Xcode knows that it needs to build this target also. So it's like, when, when does this project become dirty? Yeah? So if I change something in core text, it means this static library is no longer up to date, so it needs to rebuild this. And before it wasn't doing that. Now, um, uh, the static library requires the text from DD Core Text, so for text handling and basic UI, uh, the handling of the loop, which is in a, a separate project, and also support for the web archive pasteboard format. And all of these three are, you can see them linked binary with libraries. And for a static library, that actually means that it merges uh, in these libraries, objects with the code that's specific to this library. Um, so all, all there's, there's tons of additional source code. This source code gets compiled and then uh, put together with, with the code that's in these static libraries. And uh, this way you end up with, with one static library that contains all of that. Now for the demo app, this now has the, the resource bundle, because the resource bundle was not really necessary for the static library, because you don't use any resources there, but you need to have these resources in your app. So that's why it's dependent here. And the static library that we're building in this uh, static library target here, um, and of course there's a bit of code that's specific to this demo, yeah, main M, view controller and app delegate. Uh, you need to have uh, several uh, frameworks and libraries for this. Uh, a complete, complete list is basically seen here. Uh, you need libxml for the HTML parser uh, that's in DT core text. So it's that's parsing HTML with X, uh, libxml2. You need to have the, the library from the static library here. You need the assets library is uh, necessary for uh, getting pictures from the photo roll. Media player uh, is because there's a possibility to have video embedded uh, in uh, DT core text and some other things. Of course, core text, the framework as well. Image I.O. Is, is needed for some image operations, uh, DT lazy image view. So that's this. Uh, and here's the uh, copy bundle resources and that has the loop here. And it's a little bit tricky getting that in here. So I'm going to show this uh, when I set up a brand new project uh, for using this. But until here, you've seen uh, it's relatively straightforward. We have uh, a couple of uh, source files in our app, yeah? an app delegate, view controller, some resources, um, and then this links in uh, the static library from, the, from this entire project, plus the resources from DTLoop, right? So without further ado, we're going to uh, make a new Xcode project. Let's say we want a single view application. We want uh, to demo rich text editor, uh, no storyboard, yes, automatic referencing, reference counting, and it can be universal. Uh, let's do that here as well, create. So uh, first thing, uh, is actually we don't need a view controller as such so we uh, well, we, we do need a view controller but we don't need it to come from XIP files uh, let's see we it makes a new window uh, and we can have the view controller the general view controller be independent from what device we are running on and we don't need a nickname because um, just, just as we did before we can make our own view hierarchy. So um, for our purposes I want to uh, have a 
PT Rich Text Editor View. Uh, do I need that externally? Probably not, because I'm not setting it as an uh, as a property. But actually, I want just a rich text editor uh, instance variable to be able to reference that. So uh, we want a view uh, load view load view. Load view creates a rich text editor. It is rich text editor. Alloc init with frame. The frame we need is a CG rect frame from UI screen, main screen, application frame with this frame. Uh, and that's actually. the view of our um, view controller. Now, I, I haven't yet added any uh, anything from, from this project of mine. So what I definitely need is, uh, let me go into Finder. Uh, I generally like to have a folder externals uh, where I put external projects, sub-projects, external references. And uh, I put in here a DT rich text editor folder. And this folder actually, uh, I want to put in uh, all, all the code that's contained in the DT rich text editor uh, project. Now I've got some. Uh, Un uncommitted changes there, but these are only uh, related to the demo. So, for our uh, intents and purposes, that's that's fine. So, what I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to into this this folder here. Uh, external digital text editor, and I uh, check out the project's trunk. And actually, I don't need it to be named trunk, so I uh, just put a dot here. That takes the contents of trunk, but puts it in the folder where, where I am. And because I already have one that's named DT Rishix Editor, it means the core demo, actual project, and so on are going to be appearing here. Okay, done. So uh, I also want to see this group here. So uh, I create a new group. Or actually, another possibility is to just uh, add files to the DTRX editor. And um, rich text. Where am I now? That's the rich text editor. That's the externals. And that's the rich text editor we just checked out. So I want the externals. Uh, I don't want to add it to any target or anything. I just want it to uh, appear for the first because it creates the groups as just like the um, the tree of the thing. And uh, let me demonstrate. There's a problem in Xcode and will work around that. So I remove the references. So I end up with just basically the Xcode project. Yeah? The Xcode project is what, what I, what's the only thing that I should be needing. But there's this, a one trick that I need to show you that you need on top of that. So, um, well, the first thing, obviously, for our uh, demo app um, would be to go to build phases and add some dependencies and uh, I want it to be want it to be dependent on the static library okay and um, I also want it to be dependent on but weirdly I don't see the external projects here so I, I probably uh, removed too much 
Um, there's a uh, the DT loop bundle that I should be able to work to add as a dependency as well. No. So uh, I need something more here. I also need the core externals. Let's add this three as well. Because there I see the Xcode projects which are all that I want. So what I, I did is I just added these and then I'm, I'm removing everything except the Xcode project one. And since this looks a bit weird, you could want to move these together or somehow. It doesn't really matter as long as Xcode has a reference to them. Because now uh, if I want to add this as a dependency, I now see the products of the sub projects and I want uh, the resource bundle for DT loop here as a dependency as well. So these are the two things there. Um, now I want to link my project with the richx editor lib and I want the uh, DT loop bundle uh, result ptloop.bundle, I want that to be copied into my app. Uh, so what happens here is uh, when it builds this app, it will make sure that this ptloop bundle plus the static library are uh, done. It will compile my own sources, we'll link it all together, we'll copy the bundle resources and then we're done. Uh, okay, that, that's it. That should be the, the basic setup. Uh, actually, Again, it, it set up way too many schemes. So what we're doing is we just want to have one for our own demo and that's it. So if I build this, let's see what happens here. Okay, uh, it doesn't find DT rich text editor view. Now, <laughs> the obvious reason for this is um, I want to import DT rich text Editor, let's see, dt rich text, was it dt rich text editor h, okay, yeah, that's the one. Now, here's a problem, usually um, it should be enough to go into build setting and add uh, some the path for the headers. So looking for header, header search paths. So here we add, uh, we have a subfolder externals and we want it to be searched recursively. Let's see, still doesn't find it. Now here's a bug that I've documented on my blog. Uh, Somehow the indexer of Xcode doesn't find this file, even though if you look here, it's under externals, DTRX editor core and there. Yeah. So the trick we need to employ to make this file visible to Xcode is we need to make um, a reference to it. So I show it in Finder. Somehow does not cooperate. Why? I want to not copy it. It doesn't need to be part of any target. I just want it to be referenced here. And okay, uh, so that that's it. It now finds the editor, but it doesn't find the content view and the editor view dot h. So another thing, um, these are in source uh, editor view h, content view h. So 
again add files these doesn't need to be part of a target does, does not need to copy yeah? we just teach Xcode that these files exist um, attribute text content view that's, that's the same thing but from a different uh, project that now is related to DT Core text. So um, uh, we go to DT, DT Core text, Core Source, Show in Finder, and it complains about the text content view is there. So under DT Core Text, I want to add the text content view, no target. Try again. Add it to the text view. Okay, got that. And actually, if it's checked, it still doesn't add it to a target because headers cannot be members of a target. Uh, okay, semantic dt which text editor view. You see now we get past the input. Alright, that's that's now a different thing. Uh, you can see these are uh, symbols that can be found and the reason for that is um, ct font, these are in the core text framework uh, there's one CEI transform 3D make scale. So what we need to do next is get our uh, frameworks linked that we need here. So we get we need quartz quartz core. This was the one. Um, then we remember core text framework. Um, we need libxml libxml2 can always build ah okay these are the ones that are sufficient for the demo uh, there are some functions that if we use them we would have to add additional frameworks but just for a demo that's now sufficient for it to run and so let's see what happens um, okay uh, this is an issue that comes from uh, the, the linker settings. So just to show you what happens here. If it says unrecognized selector for instance, uh, this init with HTML options document attributes comes from uh, DT Core text and it's a category there. And in order for uh, a project to be able to use categories, uh, there's a certain build setting that you need to add in the other uh, linker linker flags. Uh, we want namely minus obc and we want a minus all load if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if that indeed fixes the problem. No, it does not. Uh, so I need to look up the flag. Don't know that by heart, unfortunately. Um, for kinetics, we want minus or load linker flag. Text editor. Mm, minus obvious minus or load. <laughs> Was this there's another possibility of course that might be that 
this is missing here static library target static library target of uh, rich text editor Note this has the minus obvious obvious C and minus all load. So it might take a few minutes to figure out what's missing here. Ah, okay, there were some more things missing. Uh, CG image source that's core image. So again we. A link we need core image and CG image source update data. We have core image. Put all this here. Um, quartz core we have. Actually, let's compare to uh, our rich text editor. Media player quartz core image IO. Did I confuse core image with? Okay, so we don't need core image. Actually, we need image IO. So, image IO. Again, it's a bit annoying that it moves it there, but. Okay, build succeed. Let's see if we have more success. Yeah. Now, that's all it takes. <laughs> It's quite a bit, but let's let's uh, quickly re review what's going on here. So uh, I've added uh, the necessary dependency. I added the resource bundle, which I was able from uh, linking the Xcode project into here, some some place that uh, Xcode can see it, uh, and the static library. Uh, we have the static library in the link binary with libraries here uh, and the copy bundle resource for the loop we have in the copy bundle resources and then we uh, have in our demo just a very simple setup uh, so if we go into the view controller we just create uh, the view and one thing that's still missing here is we also have uh, we need the text text delegate probably um, for self uh, and in order to be able to get rid of the squiggly line here uh, we have this as dt little text content with delegate and in order to use this again we need dt core text um, and dt core text uh, it's the same issue as before. If if it doesn't find a header, even though we have this set up, uh, we just go in, show in finder, dt core text has got the header in core. So di didn't I have a header for that? I thought I had dt core text. Actually, I didn't. So it's the dt other text content view that we need to use so that this protocol is defined. Let's have a look at this protocol. Um, this delegate protocol uh, is used for providing custom subviews. Uh, it's in core, dt core text and one thing that for example it allows you to do is uh, specify uh, subviews to be used for certain DT text attachments. DT text attachment might be for example an image and uh, 
you, you can use the built-in mechanism of drawing the image. Then the image is flat with the text drawn, not interactive. Or if you provide this um, method here, then instead of drawing the image, it will pass on the text attachment to you and you can configure a UI image view, for example, or a button, something interactive. And there are a couple of things like you, you can have uh, special views for the links for them to be interactive. Uh, you can have them for the text attachments and also uh, you can have customized drawing of uh, text blocks. So if you have a text block with some indentation and, and so on, uh, it can draw a, a frame around this. And you also get a, a callback method when it's done drawing. So you might want to draw, for example, line numbers on, on the text uh, on the side. Uh, um, but these, these are things that we are not going to use in this demo here. That's something you should look at uh, in DD Core text. Now, one thing though, we have this very small here. So uh, let's see if it looks any better on iPhone, yeah, you can see the default text size is rather small. So one thing that we're going to do is make this a little bit larger. And the way to do that uh, with Rich Text Editor View is um, you have the ability of spe specifying it either as a text size multiplier or, or uh, the preferred method actually is by setting uh, the uh, text, where is it, uh, the default attributes. And the default attributes are, um, they are actually uh, a set of uh, attributes that are passed on to uh, init with HTML whenever you set HTML. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm just using the, uh, the easiest way to set the text size multiplier in that case. Um, let's see if this works. If I do uh, rich, rich text editor, text size multiplier and say make it three times as large. Haha, -ha, R, B, C. And you see you even get uh, autocorrection. That also works. Um, okay, that's it for this uh, video on how to integrate it. Uh, actually, sorry, I, I wanted to recap nicely. So first, uh, we get the project checked out in uh, a subfolder of our own app. Uh, we add the Xcode project for uh, the Data Rich X editor, which is a reference to it. And also in order to have access to uh, the, the loop view, uh, resource bundle uh, target, we also need to add this and uh, we need to drag out certain headers into our Xcode so that we can find them even though we have this set up in the search path but somehow the index of Xcode doesn't find it. Then uh, we need the target dependencies the, the copying of the bundle resource, the link binary with libraries, some build settings, namely uh, the other linker flags, uh, all load and minus Objective C. Objective C that it can load Objective C classes from a static library, and all load that it loads all the categories. Otherwise, the linker thinks categories are not used, and then you will get this uh, unrecognized selector thing. And finally, you need to have some frameworks in place, uh, image.io, libxml2, the Cortex framework, and the other ones that are standard anyway. And once you have this, um, 
you instantiate a, a view where you want your editor to be. Maybe set the text size if, if you like and you're good to go. And this gives us uh, a nice view. And hi, this is our first demo project. And finally, let me show you the reason why you should actually have a navigation bar on top. Because if I now drag with my finger here and it go to the top line, you see the, the magnifying glass disappears behind the status bar. So if there was a navigation bar on top, um, then this would be a hmm, slightly better way. Okay, so there you have it, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, I could have made it a little bit quicker, but uh, unfortunately uh, I've not rehearsed this uh, integration uh, too much. Um, can probably make it a bit nicer, uh, but I just wanted to put this out there so that you can see me, the maker of it, actually putting it into a project and that should give you some pointers how to do it yourself.